Assalamualaikum. We continue in the second video to this uh, paper, which is uh, November 2020, paper 11, and we're going to do question 22 to question 40 in this uh, video. And this is the MCQ paper for line 700, A level biology. At question 22. How do we handle this question? A section of DNA contains 73 base pairs. Now, this information is given to you in the question. Now the number of bases on each strand. So there are two strands which I've drawn in green. So these are the two strands. Now you can see here. Now it's very simple way I explain this to you. This is one adenine. This is the second adenine, and this is the third adenine. So this is one strand, and this is the second strand. Right. So if there are three adenines on this, they will be. Three time means one, two, three time means on this. So this was very easy to understand. If there are 21 adenines on strand two, 21 adenines on strand two, so there will be 21 time means on this. So this time mean will be 21 here. Again. 21 adenines on one side. So on one side we have 21 adenines. So thymines on the other side would also be 21. So this is the thymine on the other side. So A or T pairs together and they two hydrogen bonds. So 21 was only on one of these. But the others one are also you can figure those out. They were 29 adenines. I'm going to give it another color. On strand one, so Z will also be 29. Why? Because 29 adenines on this side. So 29 time means so Z will be 29. So this is just a trick question in which they want to see if you've understood this or not. So it's a very simple question on the DNA, and I'm sure once you've understood this, you can do this. Now coming on to question 23. Now, question 23 was a diagram of a photomicrograph. So it says the photomicrograph shows a section of a stem. Which labeled part is the xylem? Now you know this has got four these vascular bundles here. In fact, there are these tiny, tiny ones as well, and then this one. So where is the xylem? You know the xylem shows these big circles. There's these huge circles which are very, very typical of xylem, and these thick walls around it, and there's sort of these hexagonal structures which I always look at and I always identify them very easily. So C was the answer, and this was the xylem. And you know the xylem in the stem is inside, and outside is of course the phloem. So just have a look at a vascular bundle, photomicrographs. Type in the Google search photomicrographs. And see a few photomicrographs of the vascular bundles in a stem. Fungi cause wilting in crop plants by growing within the xylem vessel elements. Which process would be directly affected by these fungi? So we've got these xylem vessels, and something you know sort of blocks them, and directly affected. But it also said it's called wilting, so that means the crop plants will wilt and die eventually. So, which process will be directly affected by these fungi? And the answer of that was A, because the cohesion between the water molecules. So, if it's blocked, how can the water molecule show cohesion? Directly, of course, will be the cohesive forces of the water, which will not be able to take part. Then, coming to question 25, which features have a role in the transfer of water in xylem vessel elements? Capillary action, adhesion, hydrogen bonding, all three of them. Because capillarity action, of course, occurs in the xylem vessels, and then the adhesion is the water molecules adhering to the wall of the uh, vessel, and the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules is the cohesion forces. So all three, so actually one, two, and three was the answer. Coming to question 26, the loading of sucrose into companion cell involves a number of processes. Which process is active? And it is the movement of hydrogen ions out of the cytoplasm of the companion cell. So this is the uh, phloem, and then you have the companion cell, and the companion cell, the hydrogen ions pumped out of the companion cell is the active process. So it is the hydrogen ions out of the cytoplasm of the companion cells, which of course is the active process, and then hydrogen ions diffuse back in, and when they diffuse back in, they bring along with it sucrose. So that was question 26. Then coming to question 
The statement describes events that occurred during the movement of sucrose. Hydrostatic pressure is decreased, increased, sucrose is loaded, sucrose is unloaded, water moves by osmosis, water moves by osmosis out of the phloem into out, water potential decreases, water potential increases. Which sequence correctly describes what happens in a plant at a source during the movement of sucrose? Source means the leaf, the photosynthesizing part. When photosynthesis is occurring, glucose is made and that is converted into sucrose. So that sucrose is sourced during the movement of sucrose. So which sequence correctly describes what happens in a plant at a source during the movement of sucrose? So that was 37523Y. Sucrose is loaded into the phloem vessel. Then 7, water potential decreases. Naturally, when so much of the solute enters, water potential decreases. And then 5, water moves by osmosis into the phloem. Why? Because water potential decreases, so higher water potential to lower water potential. And then 2, hydrostatic pressure is increased. Naturally, with sucrose and water, then all this is going to cause an increase in the hydrostatic pressure. So this is how you have to do this question and you have to understand it. Then we come on to question 28, which are present in the walls of the capillaries? Well, you know, capillaries, all the blood vessels have endothelium. So the only answer to this was A or B. COD was totally incorrect. Endothelium is present in all blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. That's the common thing between the three blood vessels. So endothelium, uh, so has only got endothelium. That's it, nothing else. Everything else, root muscle, elastic tissue, collagen fibers, nothing present. It's only a one cell thick wall of the capillary. That's all what makes up a capillary is a one cell thick wall which is called uh, endothelium. On the 29th, the photograph, photomicrograph shows three white blood cells, X, Y, and Z. And what is X? You know, X has got this kidney shaped. And then this has got this lobed shaped, like an ear lobe. And then Z is the nucleus that really fills all the cytoplasm. So we all know that this kidney shaped thingy is the monocyte. And then this uh, lobed thingy is called the neutrophil or a phagocyte. And then the Z is a lymphocyte. So the answer to that was C. Then coming on to question 30, which sequence of letter correctly identifies the order of events during the cardiac cycle? Atrial wall contract, impulse is delayed a fraction of a second, wave of excitation enters the AV node, wave of excitation passes down the percain tissue, wave of excitation spreads from the sinoatrial node, ventricles contract. So the answer to this was A. Now, of course, this is a cycle. So you can start it from anywhere you like. I mean, I would always start it from uh, the sinoatrial node. So I would start it from X. So X, after X, what do we have? So sinoatrial node is X. Wave of excitation spreads from the sinoatrial node. This would be 1. And then after X would be T. Atrial walls contract. So this would be the second one. And then it's V. V is wave of excitation across enters the AV node. And then we have impulse is delayed a fraction of a second. U. And then W. Wave of excitation passed down the percain tissue. And then Y ventricles contract. So this was a cardiac cycle and we had to really understand it in the right context to give all this sequence right. And some of the sequences are of course wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong. And you can see why they are wrong. 31, the graph shows the effect of three different partial pressures of carbon dioxide on the oxygen. X3, 5, 5, and Z is, Z is 7.0, percentage saturation. What effect does increasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide have on hemoglobin? Well, it is... It is more efficient at taking up oxygen and less efficient at releasing oxygen. 
because as you see what is what effect does decreasing the partial pressure you see it is talking of decreasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide so it is in this way we are talking we're talking about what is happening at x so what is happening at x you have to look at that you have to draw a graph you have to put some points here you have to put say 2 4 6 uh, 8 10 and then you have to put something here because it has a graph to 100 so let's put something here and but now the question is what effect does decreasing the partial pressure so we're talking of decreasing the partial pressure of carbon dioxide from the hemoglobin so naturally it has become more efficient at taking and less efficient at releasing it sort of binds on to the affinity increases but in the presence of carbon dioxide the affinity decreases which is of course called the Bohr shift or the Bohr effect and coming to question 32 what is correct about the transport of carbon dioxide by blood? What is correct? So it is 1 and 2, the enzyme carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the formation of carbonic acid in red blood cells and carbon dioxide diffuses from active cells to red blood cells and reacts with water. Now, why is 3 wrong? Carbonic acid dissociates forming hydrogen ions that combine with hemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. Sorry, 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 sorry. Hemoglobin combines with hydrogen to form hemoglobinic acid, not carb amino hemoglobin. Okay, so that was wrong in that context. Then we have question 33. Which statement about all bronchioles are correct? All bronchioles. So they have ciliated cells and they have muscle tissue so that they don't have all bronchioles do not have goblet cells. So that was question 33. Then question 34. Uh, the graph shows the volume of air breathed out quickly and with force following a deep breath, three different people. Um, volume of air breathed out. What is a possible explanation for the differences in the volume of air breathed out by these people shown? Chronic bronchitis. So in Y, what had happened is we are having volume of air breathed out is slowly increasing over time. And then in X, we had it increasing, but then it plateaus. And in Z, of course, the poor person, it only volume of air breathed out is 1 dm cube, and then it stays the same. So what is the possible explanation? So, well, we know that is that, you know, what is the possible explanation is volume of air breathed out is remaining constant, or is it sort of increasing, or is it so, which one would be the normal that has to be X? because the volume of air breathed out increases and that of course remains constant. So the answer to this is C, this is of course no longer in the 2022 syllabus that has been removed from the 2022 syllabus. Then coming to question 35, the diagram shows some of the pathogens that cause disease in humans and some of the ways they are transmitted. Now one is morbidly virus, this is measles. And then of course we have bacterium, protoptist, and then we have pathogen and then we have morbidly. What is the correct? pathogen method of transmission for the disease TB. Now TB, you know, B for bacteria or you can of course tuberculosis. So B for bacteria. So one and method of transmission was X, which is cough and sneezes, which is the airborne droplet infection. So tuberculosis is caused by a bacterium. So remember from the word TB, remember bacteria and bacteria is a prokaryote and how is it spread if you cough and sneeze then the air bond the water vapors which are in our exhaled air may contain the bacteria which is present in our lungs if we have tuberculosis of the lungs but tuberculosis can be of any organ of the body it can be of the lymph nodes it can be of the uterus it can be of the kidney it can be of the blood it can be of the bones Two question 36 the proportion of the local population of malaria in area R is higher than the proportion in area S. So two areas, R and S, which factor causes this difference? Malaria is caused by plasmodium. It is spread by the female Anopheles mosquito. So area R has a more humid climate than area S. Now, how does that predispose to malaria? You've got to understand increasing humidity means increased rainfall. Increased rainfall means increased puddles of water. It means increased mosquitoes, increased mosquito lay their eggs in stagnant water. So this was the reason why you had to correlate the malaria with the humidity. Humidity, remember in June, July in Lahore, the humidity is very high. That's because we have a lot of rainfalls and monsoons and rain and lots and lots of water. 
uh, standing here and there in puddles everywhere and that of course is a very good, very good breeding ground for uh, mosquitoes then we come on to question number 37 species x is a single cell eukaryote species x has been genetically modified to produce penicillin which does not harm the cell walls of species x what may be concluded from this information the cell walls of species x are chemically different from those of bacteria the walls of species are made up by phytoglycan and the cell walls of species x are made of cellulose now also that was one only because it said it was a eukaryote but penicillin is an antibiotic which does not harm the cell walls of species x so genetically modified to produce penicillin So, B, one only the cell walls of species X are chemically different from those of bacteria. You see, because we have used penicillin as an antibiotic. So, this is what was the answer to question 37. Then we come down to question 38. Now, that was a diagram. When exposed to an antigen for a second time, memory cells stimulate a secondary immune response, which correctly shows the secondary immune response. First is secrete antibodies, second is divides into plasma cells, third is divides into plasma cells and memory cells, secrete antibodies and divide into memory cells. So secondary immune response, secondary immune response. So this is what we had to understand is that the answer was C, divides into plasma cells and memory cells. Then coming to question 39. Monoclonal antibodies are produced for use in diagnosis or treatment of disease. To obtain the antibodies for an antigen, a mouse is injected with an antigen. Some of the events in the production of monoclonal antibodies are listed. Plasma cells are fused with cancer cells to form a hybridoma. Hybridoma cells that secrete the required antibody are identified and cloned. B lymphocytes that recognize the antigen multiply and become plasma cells. Hybridomas divide by mitosis and secrete antibodies. Plasma cells are removed from the spleen. Which is the sequence of the first four events in the production of monoclonal antibodies? Now, they've given you five. But you have to figure out which one was the first four. So the answer to that was three, five, one, four. Now, three is what? B lymphocytes that recognize the antigen multiply and become plasma cells. Then five is plasma cells are removed from the mouse spleen. Then one plasma cells are fused with cancer cells to form hybridoma. And then we have four, which is hybridoma cells divide by mitosis and secrete antibodies. So first four events. This was important that you read the question carefully in the production. So one was a later event. So you have to figure this out, which one were the first four and which one was the fifth, which you did not write. And now coming to the last question, which is 40. Which role describes passive immunity? Passive immunity is the one which you uh, are not exposed to the antigen. So triggered by an antigen, no, you never triggered. Whenever you've had path, uh, antigenic exposure, involves an immune response, no, memory cells are produced, no, and permanent protection, no, because you just get ready-made antibodies, passive immunity, either mother to the fetus, which is called natural passive and artificial passive when you give you an injection of tetanus, but that's only for three years or two years. For uh, the new ones, I think, are for three years. So it has a very temporary protection, and uh, that's it. So that finishes your uh, MCQ paper, and I wish you all the best in the exams, and I will try to post a few more as well. And uh, thank you very much.